Yeah, this is the next question of Coach Chef Chart 140. Step and tag. So, in this question, you'll be given a value n, whose constraints are from 1 till 10 power 5. And which basically represents the number of nodes in a tree. And uh, we are also given edges, so UI, VI. Yeah. And the values of this will be in the range uh, N only. Okay. Yeah. And we need to construct the tree based on these uh, edges. So there'll be N minus one total number of edges, right? So, now, let's just take a sample tree, for instance. Okay. And also, the tree is rooted at uh, vertex 1. And let's look something like this. Okay. okay. Also, we have said that there are k number of leaf nodes in the tree. Yeah. I mean, k value is not given in the question. But uh, it's basically the number. Let's say k is the number of leaf nodes. So number of nodes. Okay. So in this case, it there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaf nodes. Right. Which means there are seven people who will start from root one. Okay. I'll just number these. So there are basically seven people, which is the number of leaf nodes, and they'll start from vertex one and they'll travel to all of the leaf nodes, right? Yeah. Okay. So each one of them will at the end end up at one of these leaf nodes. Okay. Yeah. Now we also have a chef who will start from the leaf nodes instead of the root, like other people. He'll start from the leaf node and he will go uh, build his way up, right? Now, it's not mentioned at which leaf node he needs, he'll start at. That's something we need to think of. So, we need to, and while going up, he can tag people. So, let's say there is one person who came from root, uh, node 1 to 2 and started at 3. If he comes at 2, he can tag the person at 2. Yeah. Right. Also, a uh, chef cannot tag a person by sitting at the leaf node. So, it can never happen that uh, the person comes to the to chef at the leaf node and he tags. That is not possible. Basically, chef can tag other people, but not at leaf nodes, at other any node which is not a leaf node. Okay. Now, while making his way up, we need to find the maximum number of people chef can tag. Okay. So, uh, chef has the freedom to start from any node and ma make his way up. These people will have only one singular path which they traverse and uh, go up till the leaf node. Yeah. And we need to find the maximum number of people chef can tag while going up. Okay. Yeah. Now, in this case, uh, what will be the answer? In this case, if chef starts from here, he'll be able to tag two people because two people will come here. No, three people actually. Because uh, three people will come at this root number, uh, I mean, node number two, because they'll have to reach five, six, and three, right? Uh, let's say chef starts from this node. If he comes here, uh, he'll be able to tag two people here. If he comes here, he'll be able to tag two people here. At this point, he'll be able to tag only two people. So I think, yeah. So in this case, the answer will be three. So basically, at max, he'll be able to tag three people. So... What happens after first move is after the first move, three people come here, two people go here, and two people go here. Right. And at the first move itself, chef comes here. So it actually is three people. So yeah. So for this case, the answer will be three. Okay. Let's see how we can solve this problem. So let us consider our tree structure is like this, and these the this is given in the form of edges. So convert it to uh, adjacency list, and then you can see this is how the tree structure looks. So if this is our tree structure, then uh, firstly 
let's see number of people k how many like number of people k who are on the root so it is number of leaves right so if we count number of leaves here 11 there are 11 leaves so uh, these land people have to go to the root right yeah. i mean go to, to the, the leaves okay. so here there are 11 people in the at the root so here we can guarantee that every person's path will always be unique yeah. why because at the end each person at the root want to uh, want to remain in a leaf which is distinct basically at the end every person will be on a distinct uh, leaf there won't be a leaf where where there will be uh, more than one person right so that is why we can guarantee every person will always have a unique path correct okay? so okay we can't guarantee every person will have a unique path but we can guarantee that at a particular moment always number of people who visit will be unique yeah okay uh, so considering all 11 people as identical if we see in that fashion okay then at every node each person visiting uh, at every node if we see how many people visits that node that will always be unique okay right so a uh, number of people who will visit the visit any node would be number of leaves in the circle right right, right. Uh, because here if we see there are 11 people so people we don't know which person went to which path but we only need how many people to, to that path so if we see over here for sure three people among the 11 will come right exactly. because there are three leaves here mm-hmm. to uh, node 3 among 11 Seven people will come, right? And to ten, one person will be. So this way, they they split them so exactly, mm-hmm. uh, so that they can end up, uh, they can end up at distinct leaves. Mm-hmm. So this way, because they are traveling, we can guarantee uh, the count of people at every node will always be unique. Right. Yeah. So that is why, uh, like uh, now, this is how they are traveling. Now in the question. Uh, there is chef who want to tag people right yeah so he can start with any of the leaf but we don't know which leaf he'll start from he uh, he can choose any optimal one so let's just dry run taking one of the leaf and then let's see how he can choose a optimal one. Okay. so in case if he chooses this now chef has chef can basically move to any adjacent right yeah. uh, from the current leaf node so uh, one observation that we can make is it's useless for chef to go down that is uh, let's say he is going here he is going here then it's useless for chef to go down right uh, because uh, number of people who will visit 3 will for sure visit 6 number of people who will visit 3 will for sure visit 6 yeah but in 6 there there can be less number of people compared to 3 right, right so if we see from ancestor point of view uh, all the ancestors will have more number of people compared to the uh, nodes which are descendants right which uh, uh, which are descendants of it. yeah so that is why it's always optimal for chef to move up and once he moves to a node he can stay there right yeah uh, there can be a optimal Uh, the optimal way for chef to play is going up and stay at some if required, okay. or he can just move. So now let's see. Uh, we just saw what is the optimal play of chef. Now, if we dry run for the same thing, uh, after the first move, for sure we know these. This is unique. The distribution is always unique. So here there will be three people after the first move. Then there will be seven. There will be one. Right. And chef will move over here. Chef will come to this one. Chef will come to this one. Now, from here, a uh, chef can't go up. Like uh, after the first move, chef came to seven, mm-hmm. and uh, for three, the distribution is seven. Right. Now in the next move, distribution will go as follows. 
that is over here, this becomes two, this becomes one. Then for seven, it becomes one person will come here, one person will come here. Then to this five people will come. Yeah. So now if we see uh, in Chet's turn, he can just stay at seven. So he's basically here, if we see one person met Chet, so he can tag one person. Yeah. Only one person. If Chet starts from 13, he can tag only one person. So similarly, uh, this way we can just uh, dry run and see how many maximum people can chip tag. Mm -hmm. So from this we can observe one thing. As the distribution is always unique, and we know how many people will visit a particular node, and at what time they visit. So uh, at what time people will visit, we can calculate it based on the distance from root to that particular. Right, yeah. So let's say uh, to eight, we want to calculate how many people will visit, uh, how many people will be present at eight, and at what time they'll be present. Uh, time will be after two operations. Yeah. After two operations, they'll be present at eight, and at eight, number of people will be present at five. That is nothing but the number of leaf nodes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now, if Chef wants to like if Chef wants to tag someone, and one more thing, before moving on to this, it is always optimal. We just discussed that it is always optimal to, it is always optimal for Chef to move till some node, stay at their throne. Yeah. So now he always go to a node which is as high as possible, because we just saw that distribution will keep on decreasing as we mm -hmm. come uh, down the uh, right. down the down the tree. Exactly. So, because we are coming down the tree, distribution is decreasing. It is always uh, better for Chef to start from a leaf and go as high as possible till which he can meet all the people who are, who are coming to that. Right. So, yeah. for that, uh, let's say Chef started at 17. Then time that will that Chef will take to reach 8 would be 2. two right? So, after 2, uh, after uh, after two operations, he will reach eight. But uh, can he tag people here? Because after the first operation, firstly, people will move, then Chef will move. Right. Exactly. So, uh, after, yeah, so after the second, of, after the first operation, people will come here. Then people will come here. So, Chef was here when it is the first operation. Now, sec in the second operation, uh, people came here. Yeah. Then it's Chef's turn and Chef will come here. Right. So, Chef so, can tag. Them. Chef can tag. Yeah. So, though they are, uh, though the timestamp is equal because Chef is in second, he can tag. Exactly. So, now, uh, yeah. Now, let's see when all Chef can tag. So, basically, we just saw that Chef can uh, reach a node and stay there. So, we need to calculate the fastest time for Chef to reach that node. Because once he reaches the node with he the fastest stay. time, uh -huh. he, can, he can stay there and wait for people to visit him. Right. Then he can tag them. So, for that, what we can do is, firstly, we can, for each node, let's say for 8, where I can For 8, what is the time? At which people will reach eight. Okay. So time that people will reach eight is distance from root to eight. That is two. And uh, the number of people at eight is yeah, five. number of people at eight is five, <laughs> which is number of leaves. Now the fastest time that Chef can le reach eight is he has a choice to pick any leaf node optimal. Right. Yeah. So it is always better for Chef to pick the leaf which is closest to eight to reach it quicker. Yeah. So he'll pick either fourteen or two. Because both, uh, if he picks any of them, he can reach faster. So let's say he picked 14, then he can reach uh, the node in one operation. So in case if Chef reaches, yeah, in case if Chef's time to reach a particular node is smaller than or equal to the time that people are taking right. from the node, then we can say that Chef can tag that. Uh, Chef can tag right. those group of people. Which is five minutes. Which is five minutes. Right. So, for that, uh, now we just saw for every eye, we just need to calculate 
three set of things. Yeah. So for every i, if we know what is the uh, distance from root to that node. to node i this distance and the distance from i to any leaf minimum of distance any leaf in the subtree so what is the minimum distance from i to any leaf in the subtree then this is the time taken by chef and this is the time taken by people and if we know how many people will actually visit that ayatma, which is nothing but number of nodes in the number of leaves in the subtree. Leaves in subtree. Then we can just conclude, we can just conclude that if this distance is smaller than or equal to this distance, then our answer could be leaves in the subtree. Right. Yeah. Our answer could be this. So we can do this, we can brute force this for each and every i. Each and every uh, node in that yeah, except, the leaf. except the leaf. Except the leaf node. If we brute force this on every other every node, other then we'll get our Yeah, we'll get our So for that, uh, uh, for implementation, hints could be like for each i node. Hmm. While backtracking, we can calculate number of leaves. Okay. Similarly, while backtracking, we can find out the maximum depth. Maximum depth. Uh, maximum depth uh, from ith node to any leaf in the subtree. Right. And by we need to find the uh, minimum distance, right? Oh, uh, sorry. The minimum distance. The minimum distance from uh, the ith node to any leaf in the subtree. So while backtracking, well, back we, we can keep a track of a value. Hmm. Uh, and at every node, if it's, uh, we'll pick up the lesser one. And lesser we'll keep, one. Lesser one. Up. And we'll keep doing. So let's just take. Uh, eight as an example. Okay. Let's say eight is our example. Yeah. Now, uh, firstly, to calculate leaves, whenever we are at leaves, let's generate a value called one. Hmm. And when we are backtracking, we can just pass this value. Right. So here the value becomes one, and here it becomes one plus one, which is two. Right. And uh, yeah, and these two things won't back. Now when we are going back from this, we get one. And back from this plus two minute. Then we are back to here plus one. Then we are back to plus one. Right. So this way we can track number of leaves in the subtree. Right. Uh, from one from the leaf node we can start putting one. Exactly. And mm -hmm. keep moving it. Keep merging all the ones to the top. And to calculate the maximum to calculate the minimum distance. Uh, let's see how we can put track of the minimum distance. Before that, this is this is easier to track. While we are doing DFS from root to i, we can maintain a variable and track the level. Right. At which level? For level, we can just uh, at every alternate DFS call, we will just increment the level. Increment the level plus. So for level, we can start from here. Then when we are making a DFS call to this, it would be two, two, two. DFS call to four, it would be three. Then for all these, uh, at the at the time when we are making DFS call for this, the levels will be three. So we can just maintain a parameter in our DFS. Exactly. Right. To, to put track of this. And now let's see how we can put track of the minimum uh, distance from any ith node to leave. Let's consider it for the eight. Okay. So for that, what we do, what we can do is we can assume the distance is zero at every leaf. Okay. So I'm just solving it for this sub. So okay. eight. Similarly, it holds for all. So now, when we are going to eleven, it would be the minimum distance to any leaf plus one. Right. So which is one here because minimum distance is zero hmm. and it's a one. So for this, it would be minimum distance of any leaf. Minimum distance uh, uh, to any leaf from its children plus one. plus one, which is one here. Again. Similarly, for this, it's however zero, they are leaves. Now, when we are going to this, it is again minimum distance from all the, uh, from, from the children to any leaf plus yeah. one. So here, 
the distance is one, here the distance is one, here it is zero, zero. So minimum is zero among right. all the distances. Zero plus one because one edge gets added. Which is two, uh, which is one. Yeah. So this way we can track the and if we manually check this is the minimum distance or A to 40, that can also be the minimum. Right, exactly. So this way we can just when backtracking calculate the minimum distance from I to leaf any leaf, any something. Right. And why we are making BFS calls by maintaining the variable, we can drag the distance from root to I. And this part while we are backtracking, we can just merge the counts. Counts of the, of number, the number of leaves. Number of leaf leaf sub two. Yeah, sub two. So what, this will, what will be the time complexity of this problem? Yeah. So this way by maintaining those three variables, we can solve it. And time complexity, we can say to be big of thing. Right. Yeah. So ignoring small constants, maybe the factor could be two or three into mm -hmm. uh, So we can just say it's big of thing as we just perform one DFS from the root. Yeah. And we maintain all these while back then. Mm -hmm. And here, space complexity, we can implement it with a space of O1. O1 we can implement if we return all these parameters instead of storing it in exactly right. in any instead of storing it storage in any... structures right. right like arrays and if we use arrays to store the values at each and every node it will, it can be implemented in O1. so both so of them are if we are storing the values yeah. what we can do is and in one DFS call we can uh, find the mid distance and store for every store node. For every. We can find the number of nodes uh, in number of leaf nodes in every subtree and store it in store it one array. And this value also we can store it in. Yeah. One array. I mean, basically we can store that in three different arrays and we can solve it in that way. Also. Yeah, that way. But it will take more memory. Or we can directly just run a DFS and uh, return the path. While yeah. doing the DFS only, we can find out there. Yeah. Also, we do update the answer only if the current node is not a leaf. Not right. a leaf. Okay. So, ignoring all the leaf nodes, uh, we calculate the answer for all of the Exactly. So, this way we can solve it with a space of either O1 or O1, depending on the way you Right. Yeah. These all are perfect. Right. Yeah. This makes sense. 